Hello, file maker developers on YouTube. If you are learning, wanting to learn some new things on FileMaker, I noticed that there isn't anything on YouTube other than forums on FileMaker about how to sort records based off a range date from a start date to an end date. Um, I just figured this out and I think it'd be cool to have a video up on YouTube, my first video on FileMaker. I've learned a lot. Uh, for my database right now, I'm doing a complete clients database with a bunch of clients, work order forms, and so on. Um, I've learned a lot from Guy Stevens. Um, one thing I just learned off of reading the forums is date ranges. So right now, I am developing the income slash expense reports for this program. So for the bookkeepings we have different accounts so we have like payroll, payroll taxes and different account names can be deductible or not deductible during tax season um, you can add a new account if you want to record different amounts um, and then you can edit expenses so each expense will have a date a paid by type a check number if it was paid by check and it was paid to which would be like um, the category it goes under, so like payroll taxes, uh, advertising, or whatever that goes under. You can add a new one. It show all expenses. So this will be a history of all time for every single year you do your bookkeeping for. Well, this doesn't really help out when we go out to printing. Um, when you do your bookkeeping, it's best you want to print out only that year's bookkeeping because you're only doing taxes for that year so which would be good is to have a date range so let's say right now you can see I have 2016 and 2015 here we can do like you go to 2009 you go to January 1st and we can go to like December 31st of 2009 and what we're going to do is we're going to search for records through only the years, year 2009. So we search that. Now it omits all those other records from other years that don't relate to year 2009. Right now my layout isn't really correct here. Um, I don't have a sorting button just yet. I'm going to set by the month, date, and then year. It makes it a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to sort that. You can see how it says payroll. So we have 115. And then also in payroll taxes, there is 12. So you can see how it only shows 2009 in here, all the way up to 1231, all the way from January 2nd. So it's only getting the date range from the first to the last. So the 12th, 31st of 2009. Okay, let's see, this is cutting off. Move some of this over. Click these, hold shift to select multiples, drag over. Click this. Extend that a little bit, and we can move these over. Get these the same size. You could just drag out until you get the little blue ones. Um, or if it was the same size, if it was a smaller size, you could select both of them. And then you can go into your positioning and your inspector. And if you go under resizing, this it's like it shows like an error from smallest to large. So out of the two you have selected, this one will go to the largest. Uh, now a little equal. I like using that a lot. I'm gonna select all these. I got a little bit of OCD here. I'm gonna space these equally. That looks nice. Put this up here. All right, cool. So yeah. I'm going to show you how to do this. It's actually pretty simple. Uh, I was reading over the forums. Um, let me see here. There's. I was reading on this. It was like kind of overcomplicating. Um, they are saying a lot more in searching and creating scripts. Um, but I got the hang of it after reading for a couple hours. We'll play along with that. Um, I like playing with a lot of my icons. 
Um, oh, what can I do here? All right. Uh, I just made a simple script. It just sets these fields to zero. And the plane, and we're going to show all records. This will give all my records back. So you can see how I have 2016 back and 2015 back. So you can see how throughout the years of doing your bookkeeping, like 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, they're all show up here. Well, at the end, when you want to print out your bookkeeping, you just set out one, the first of whatever year to the end of whatever year, and you can sort it. All right, now how do you do this? Well, if I double click this, you can see how it comes from a table called search. Uh, right now we're under expenses. We're going to go file manage database, tables. So you can see I have one table labeled search. And in here, all I have is, um, let's go back to creation order. Whoops. There we go. So what we have here is an ID. Every table you make, you should give it an ID, um, which is just a serial number and it's an value on creation. And then we have a manual start date, end date, and date range. Uh, I spelled that wrong. Whatever, I don't want to say anything else. We're going to do manual start date. Um, you want to declare this as a um, global variable. So we have the type as date. Manual start date is a date. And your storage is a global storage. It stores one value for all your records. Okay. And the same thing with your manual end date is you want to have a global storage as well. And I also did a specified a calculation field on the manual start date, so it automatically puts the start date in there. If you just want to get one date, sometimes you need to do that. Sometimes you don't. You can always change it. it. Makes things a little bit quicker, so you don't have to go all the way back. So it's not jumping all the way to like 2016. That's optional. Then you have a date range. Now what the date range does is it takes your start date and your end date and finds everything else in between. So all you have to do is get my field search. I put this hyphen up here so it's always on top. Everything are always on top. Um, we're in search field, so we're going to take the manual start date of this search and quotation marks dot dot dot. In this forum, it explained what the dot 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 stood for. I can't really tell you 100% what it meant, but that's what it wanted me to add. So I set it in there, dot 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 quotation marks, and the manual update. So I'm guessing this is just going to fill in everything else in between from these two dates. Okay, cool. Um, now, what you want to do is in order to have these on these same tables, it has to be related to expenses. So if we go on my relationships right now, I have account names. It's related to my expenses. So now I can list all my account names under my expenses. Now what I want to do is I want to link up my search ID to my expense ID. You want these to be equal. So search ID equals expense ID. Okay, cool. Back to our layout. Now what we want to do is we're just going to insert these fields. All these are just adding our search fields that we just made. Manual start date, manual end date, and we're going to use a script to use the range. So what we want to do is when we set these two it's going to work off of this field, which is our expense date. Um, I made a mistake in the beginning. Um, if you go to manage database, my tables here, um, my expenses, um, under my expenses table, my date was a text, and I just switched it to a drop down calendar under my um, inspector, under um, data. But it doesn't calculate as a date, so it doesn't search for it doesn't store that date. So you want to make sure whatever you're searching for under date is actual a date type. Alright. To our script now. So I just have this like nice old 
search finder here, and the search finder it just performs a script. It performs my expense date search, and under here, what we're doing is we are setting the date value. We're setting a variable of date with the value of manual range date. Now, if you remember that our manual range date is a calculation of the start date and quotations dot 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 and our end date. So it's taking these two and everything in between and it's going to perform a find. Under this perform find we're going to specify find requests and we're going to find records under expenses expense date under this variable. So what we want to do is find all the records under this date, which is this date here, under this criteria of variable manual range date. And if you remember correctly, like I just said, manual range date, if we go to our search table, manual range date is a calculation, manual start date and quotations dot 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 and manual end date. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, ooh, I need to do it. You need to store this data as a global storage as well. I'm surprised it still worked. Okay, let's say if I want 115 to 130 of 2000. See how it automatically puts it. So if you only wanted that date, then it would only do that. That's why I like that. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. Just handy to have. And we'll perform this find. You can see all these records that we get. Uh, I'm going to sort this real quick. I need to make a button that sorts it for this real quick. And you can see it, it makes it nice and clean and easy to read. So under payroll, you can see those records. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Not that bad. Um, hopefully that helps most people. I mean, I would have liked the video to watch, um, but I had to read these stupid forums. They get boring to read, but I mean, they help. Um, but yeah, I would like to help other people out. Um, if you have any questions, you can leave some comments. Email me at moderndesigns9 at hotmail.com if you ever need help. Um, yeah, now with this form, like, since this is a find right now, you can see the found records. Now if I wanted to only print these out, like, I could create a PDF real quick. And that PDF button goes into Finder. If I go to my desktop here, Ace Clients, I had this uh, reports folder. And let's see what we got here. You can see how it said 2004. 14, let's see what we got here. Dun, 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 dun. We open this up. I have it fixed with namings. What it did is under payroll, it did these two reports, 115 and 130, which is good. And our totaling is 9,926 and 39 cents, which is good. If we go to report two, is three records, which is great. We have one, two, three, and then we have 115, 130, 130, 115, 130, 130, which is great. And you can check your total history amount under these three records. Total history amount is 419424, which is perfect. So if you only wanted those dates, you could print them out super quickly. It's really nice and handy. The printer button does the exact same thing. It just instead of saving a PDF, it prints it. Um, if you want to see more in depth on how I make all this, then leave me some comments, and I'll get to it. This is my first little video on FileMaker. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks.